Welcome back to Care of the Common Game. Today, we're going to do another partner pair. I like doing the partner pairs because I knock out two legends with one deck that way. Uh, we have Timon and Rhoda. So let's read Timon since eh, this ability is mm, okay. Uh, three, four, four, five, Flyer, Spirit, okay. At the beginning of each combat, tap up to one target creature. So you get to tap something during the combat step. That's cool. But the real reason why we're here is Rhoda. Uh, human Soldier, 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three, partner Vigilant. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Rhoda. That's what, that's what we're here for. This is a Rhoda deck. Um, we may never cast uh, Timon. Man, we might. Who knows? But it is all about tapping down your opponent's creatures. Just keeping them tapped down. Uh, but before we get into that, we have to cast these spells. So let's look at our mana, shall we? We have a Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bobble, and Expedition Map to help find what we need. Um, mainly to help find Rogue's Passage. Because let's face it, this is a commander damage deck. Rhoda's doing all the heavy lifting here. Uh, but... Uh, Star Compass, Azura Signet, Mind Stone, and then the the guild, uh, the Clue Stone, Key Rune, Locket, and Border Post. Now, since we are going to be dealing most of our, probably most of our damage with Rhoda, we've got to protect Rhoda, you know. Swiftfoot Boots and Whisper Silk Cloak. Whisper Silk Cloak is preferable because it makes it unblockable. And unblockable on your commander that's just going to keep growing is pretty good. And if we have a fire trigger, that's the only pumps we've got, right? So now, let's look at, uh, well, no, hold, hold on. Four card draws. Theft is, um, theft of dreams. It, it, it fit the theme, uh, and so is borrowing 100,000 arrows. And then we have Archivist. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Why Archivist? Well, I'll show you why. Because the deck already runs things that is going to help. Okay, we have... Let's look at when. When creature becomes tapped. Betrayal says when it comes become tapped, draw a card. Stinging Lissid becomes an enchantment attached to a creature. And it says when it when enchanted creature becomes tapped, it deals two damage to their controller. Well, we're running stuff like free from the real so that we can tap and untap the same creature over and over and over and over again, right? Well, that might also work with the Archivist if we need to do that. Gideon's Avenger is another one. When a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, he gets bigger. Verity Circle. When becomes tapped. You may draw a card. That's awesome. Um, Palatian Accord, all the way back from Dissension. Becomes tapped, put a counter on this. And you can prevent damage with those counters. It's not, you know, underused card. Well, underused, because this is probably the first deck that's ever wanted it, right? Uh, Temporal Distortion. Uh, you Essentially, it's every other turn, right? But it slows things down. Uh, slowing down is going to be great with the Ghostly Prison um, in the deck. Now, I do have the Kismet and the Frozen Ether. No, it's not a Stasis deck. Uh, but, and we don't get the trigger for those, you know, because they interplay tapped. But it just seemed to fit the theme of the deck to, to, to just keep your stuff tapped, right? And. A card I did down in the uh, YouTube shorts a, a couple of well, a couple weeks ago was Arena of the Ancients. This is an amazing card. It taps down all commanders when it comes into play. Uh, I mean, and we use a lot of legends that aren't our commanders, so uh, yeah, yeah. But now I want to look at Sands of Time. I know, I said it wasn't Stasis Day. But uh, we skip our untap step. Right at the beginning of each player's turn, you tap what's untap and untap what's tapped. So with our ability to, to manipulate what's tapped and what's untapped, we can get 
the maximum value out of Sands of Time, where everybody else is just thrown into chaos. So let's look at tap target, shall we? First card I wanted was Mind Games, because it has buyback, and you know you can just repeatedly keep doing it. Flood. One man enchantment, two blue to use. If it ain't got flying, I'm going to tap it and do all of those effects that when something becomes tapped, right? Um, the uh, Gideon's Lawkeeper, the Tappers, you know, they have been printing this type of card for a long time, since all the way back in Tempest with Master Decoy. We got, you know, Ballynock Trapper. That's a, that's a good one, because it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't take mana to do it, and you play a white spell that untaps. Fate Stitcher, uh, Puppeteer, just tapping creatures. Heck, the Bone Crank, Icy Manipulator. Uh, but then we have, you know, Tidal Surge. You know, I always look to play any kind of portal cards I, I can, especially because the Goblin Art is hilarious. Um, Shacklegeist. <laughs> No, this is not the last deck. <laughs> not yesterday's, but uh, you can still tap two spirits um, and, you know, tap a creature. That's it's not nothing. Because we do have some spirits. You know, our commander's a spirit. The Nebelgas Herod's a, Herald is a spirit that uh, also works with tapping down things. The Nimbleus of Frost is a spirit um, that you can tap down with. Just give it a jolt. You know, tap or untap something and you get to draw a card next turn. Uh, narcolepsy. Enchantment, but I, I like this. It's I like narcolepsy a lot better than claustrophobia. Still playing it, though. <laughs> but because this doesn't keep it tapped. It just says, at the beginning of each upkeep, if it's untapped, tap it. So you get that trigger every time. I mean, I'm still running claustrophobia, right? Uh, you know, it just doesn't untap. But then there are a few, tap them all, you know, put them to sleep, tap them all. Bluster Squall Overloaded, tap them all. Ensnare, yeah, it's got that alternate play cost, but uh, even at four mana, tap them all. Um, Tempest Caller, enters the battlefield, now it's tap all target opponent controls. So, um, oh, we've got... Going into uh, this, I, I kind of like. This is, you know, exile X target creatures, then investigate X times, return the exiled cards to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control beginning of the next 10 step. It's an expensive anti-wrath, but it, it, you can protect however many things you want. And it doesn't say creatures you control. So you can make deals if you're playing kingdoms or what have you. You can make deals and, um, you know, save other people's creatures if it so suits you. <laughs> so, we have blue and white. Is this the second blue and white deck in a row? I think it was, because the last one was Travel Spears. Anyway, we got blue-white removal. Uh, rapid hybridization and sword to plowshare. Uh, the counter magic ends. Arcane denial. Negate. Counter spell, mana leak, uh, dark steel mutation, and imprison in the moon uh, are just super hot tech. It run them every chance you get because they are good. You, if you put it on their commander, it doesn't send it to a zone change, so they don't get to put it back in the command zone. It stays there. It just becomes a land. And loses all other card types and, and abilities. So it's in play but useless. I love it. Um, the Disenchant, Etherize, you know, somebody's attacking you, put them all back. <laughs> of course, Rout and Kurtar's Wrath. Uh, and that is going to bring us to our non basic lands. So the idea is just tap, keep tapping, and keep incurring effects for all the cool stuff. Um, Blow through these two mana ones. You have Prairie Stream, Irrigated Farmland, Azorus Chancery, Meandering River, Tranquil Cove, Azorus Guildgate, Skycloud Expanse, Temple of Enlightenment. 
Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Command Tower, and y'all saw the the big one, <laughs> the Rogue's Passage, earlier in the video. So it's kind of neat. Uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. This one has not been played yet. Uh, a lot of these others have been played by somebody, me or one of the players at the table. Uh, we have uh, a lot of times, you know, people will show up without decks and they'll just pick one off the wall or randomly get one off the wall or, you know. So, it's on the wall. It's got a few to choose from. <laughs> but that is what we have got for today. I do appreciate it. Uh, y'all thank you so much uh, hope hope today finds you well but until then till tomorrow until then i didn't say anyway until next time we're gonna go ahead and shuffle and cut <laughs>